How you ever love somebody and they broke your heart? Millions of people have been asking me, Hey Gerbert, why are you always talking about all this incel stuff? What, do you not have any bitches? Here's the thing about this, this question. It's a very interesting question. In that no one ever seems to, to ponder the possibility that maybe it's the that don't have me. Anyways, I decided to talk to a dating therapist to uh, see if I can find a good match. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm a decently handsome guy i try to put in effort to my appearance i work out whatever it's just i don't really know where to start you know where to meet girls i don't i'm just struggling tell me about what kind of girls you're going after like what are you looking for in a woman mixed asian half white half asian big <laughs> thunder thighs bow nice rack bing bang big tit uh tall like taller than me six foot tall uh, 130 plus IQ, 32 inch vertical, no mm -hmm. tattoos, debt free, virgin. Did mm -hmm. I say big? Uh, I said big rack, right? You said big racks, yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. Women, they date up. So, what you have to do is you have to schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The type of woman that you want has to have either two or three of these mental disorders. Everyone with auras, they have a roster. And in order to create a roster, you need to pray after mentally disabled women. <laughs> Let's be real, you're white, mm -hmm. you're pasty, you are milk, yeah. you are vanilla. Mm -hmm. You have zero flavor. There is zero seasoning to you. How to manipulate an autistic woman and that's where the dark triad comes in, because the dark triad is quite literally black. No, you don't. You're not advanced yet for the dark triad bedroom game. When you meet an autistic woman, and this is obviously going to be after you've black maxed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After I have this course, it's going to tell you everything that you need to know about using the dark triad and also the female triad that I told you about earlier. And on top of that, it's going to teach you all of the all the tricks that you need to to take advantage of the schizophrenic the full course is going to be roughly nine hundred ninety eight dollars and eighty six cents it is a big investment but i need you to feel that investment so that you can be invested in this course okay. you know you may have seen this general social survey graph from 2018, but you probably haven't seen the updated version of 2022. The older graph shows that male virginity has supposedly skyrocketed since 2012, but the newer one shows that since then it has plummeted. I, like many other people, even recently, uh, surmised that this was an ongoing trend only getting worse, especially because it was pre-pandemic. Let's just say the rate of growth was consistent. If we would extend the graph to 2022, the number would be around 38%. But we're coming to find out that maybe it was just a blip. Bald head bitch. Is this whole idea of an ever-growing incel population, women only wanting to engage with Chaz, leaving many men to be virgins, some sort of illusion? A way of chronically online uh, men to project their own failures onto a larger societal problem? As the saying goes, misery loves company. Is there actually a rising virginity rate? Are more and more men becoming incels? How many incels are there actually? You'll find out in this video. Be sure to like and subscribe lookofthedead.com for merch. How is it that in 2018, the virginity rate was almost one third of all men, but in 2022, it plummeted? That doesn't even make sense post COVID. Well, the truth is that these general social study surveys 
have quite a low sample size. Better data sets with over 10 times the sample size show that virginity is steadily increasing very marginally. It's not nearly as sensational as the 2018 graph that went viral. Also in this graph, the rates between men and women are quite similar in following the same trend. Now, again, these are all surveys. It's not like scientists are running around gathering the fiber off of these guys' scrotums to actually uh, prove concretely whether or not they're getting laid. Okay, they could be lying. There could be a Hawthorne effect going on here, but it would be dishonest to say that's what's going on with this newer graph when everybody on the internet took the 2018 general social survey graph at complete face value. People will, on the internet, latch on to the most sensational, extreme data there is, even though it's far from the best. And then draw, you know, I did the same thing, drawing all these conclusions. And I mean, there is a slight trend going on, but it's not that crazy. In actuality, you might just be a fucking loser. So are incels valid? I guess it depends. If it's just about getting laid, there are a lot of girls nowadays that aren't too picky with that sort of thing. They're very loosey-goosey. They've been hopping on ween like a daily routine long before the day they've turned 18. Uh, I suppose you could call them, well, I mean, I'm pretty tolerant. I would call them free, expressive, uh, but I've heard them been referred to as dirty whore. Point is, if you just want to have sex, I really don't think that itself is that hard. It's, I don't find it to be a remarkable feat. I don't think you have to be a particularly impressive guy. You know, I hate to say the cliche thing, but I've seen a lot of conventionally unattractive guys have success with getting laid a lot. They're just outgoing. This whole Chad only thing, it basically all comes from data from online dating, which is a sausage fest that shouldn't be taken seriously. The internet bleeds into real life a little bit, but there are plenty of normal people getting together. If you look at the data honestly, or you could just go outside and see them. So how many incels are there actually? Some people would posit that they don't exist, that any man if he tries hard enough, can find a partner if he just does the right things, as if human sexuality is completely moral and fair and there's no genetic factors involved. There are some people, some true cells, they're called, um, in the sort of incel vernacular. Men with autism have a very high chance of being a virgin. I don't think it's really people's place to sit there and gaslight these guys when they're on a fundamentally different social wavelength. So they're valid. Life circumstances do produce genuine incels, but there aren't a lot of them. They're actually relegated to the bottom percentages of men. Not like many people would claim that the bottom 80% of men aren't getting any action whatsoever. Even guys that might consider themselves incels or incel adjacent uh, usually aren't gonna be that. I'm not even sure if a lot of self-identified incels are even less attractive than the average guy. There are a select few of true cells, but really for most guys, it is a matter of standards. How low are you willing to go? I can go use these apps or go get drunk enough to be sociable and pork a four. If you haven't, it might sort of eat away at you. You might think it's way more uh, impactful and, and better than it actually is. But if you do it, you realize there's nothing there. It's quite pointless and kind of gross. So I'm not technically involuntarily celibate. And despite what the internet would tell you with cherry picked bad data, most men aren't. But it's not like these, these goofy internet words actually mean anything anyways. But does this mean that there are no legitimate gripes? There are no good points? raised by these guys is dating today completely fine and you're just a loser if you have problems with it i suppose it would be fair to call me an incel because when i look at 
postmodern dating, when I look at the state of relationships today, I do hate it. I do despise almost everything that I see. I think it's deeply twisted and all fucked up. Allow me to define my parameters for a successful relationship. The longest running study of human happiness is quite thorough. It's been going on for 70 something years studying the same sample group. Frequently there are check-ins. They don't just give these people surveys. They do blood work, brain scans, test every measure of their mental and physical health, which are correlated. What did they find, you ask? Well, people with close personal relationships. Now, the original study group is old now. This is almost always supplied by their life partner, their marriage. People with strong close personal relationships by every metric were better off. Physically, mentally, they felt less physical pain. And with their old age in feeling this physical pain, they felt less demoralized by the pain. Having a strong relationship, especially as you get older, your body gets weaker, it's quite important for your happiness. According to the longest running study, of human happiness. So with that being said, a successful relationship is a lifelong bond with children, most likely sanctioned by marriage. So what are the chances of this relationship happening for me, for anyone like me? By the way, I use relationship in quotes because that, that's a new term. It used to just be, uh, oh, there's a girl, we're married. If you think about the term, it's extremely vague. It doesn't actually mean anything. We're in a relationship. And now it's gotten even more vague with a situationship. It doesn't even mit- it, The relationship is already vague, now it's a situationship. What the fuck are you even talking about? So how many so-called relationships succeed? Besides all this Chad lookism kind of goofy shit, this is the real black pill. There are two endings to a relationship. Breakup and marriage. As high as 85% of dating ends in breakups, 85% of people will have gone through a breakup. The average relationship lasts around two or three years. People will have gone through about five relationships before they get married. The marriage rate is just over 30%. Most people are getting married in their late 20s, early 30s. So yeah, the marriage rate is already quite low, but how many marriages themselves are successful? Again, success to me includes children. Uh, I'll mention here that less than half of Zoomer women even want to have children. 30% of marriages are childless. Childless marriages are more prone to divorce. Another 20% are only children. I'm including this because uh, growing up as an only child is, is quite sad usually and it fucking blows. You've probably heard that the divorce rate is about 55%. It isn't just the divorce rate, but the amount of marriages that arguably should be divorced on account of uh, certain factors. We can't know the exact number of these because it's it's much more qualitative, but uh, dead bedrooms, they're just staying together for the kids, they don't want to go through the process of being divorced. So that's not very good. I'm not saying don't try, I, I'm still going to, but it looks pretty grim. You know, dudes obsessing over looks and not being able to get laid is kind of a chronically online diversion. This in itself is mostly driven by social ineptitude, which is a consequence of a lack of community. And uh, there is a lack of community because there's no family. Family is the prototype for all community. A return to community requires a return to family. A return to family requires a sacrifice in personal action. People always talk about returning to community, wanting that back, but the truth is we have been freed from communal bonds and pursuits. There's a tendency to offload the whole problem into something like places not being walkable, walkability. Well, Tokyo and many parts of Europe are perfectly walkable and they're facing the same thing. Our libertine modern utopias want all the benefits of tightly knit communities while paying none of the costs of individual freedom. It seems to me like there's actually nothing fair or moral 
about human sexual behavior, and we actually just can't be left to our own devices uh, and thing and expect things to work out. Instead of family formation, we now find a dating scene, which almost inevitably turns into a shit show. A, a modern date is basically just an interview with a stranger, where you used to be set up in a community where you already know each other. There's nothing weird about it. I know almost inevitably there are going to be people saying, oh, you're thinking about this too much. I mean, I guess it's possible. I, I never really wanted to. I wish things would just work out, but this, the reality is the reality. Uh, and also a counterpoint, maybe you're not thinking about it enough. It's actually exactly the problem. There's no, there's no foresight. There's no planning ahead. Our, our stra it's all just completely reactive. The way we matchmake in the West now is all short-term, reactive, responding to things as opposed to long-term planning, which is what it always used to be. Communities, uh, your family, your community actively works planning ahead in matchmaking you. Now you're just on your own. In order to maintain our civilization, High investment parenting, monogamy, and higher birth rates are required. Um, and there, there are none, of, none of these things are being met. And for most people, it doesn't even seem like there's an effort for these type of things to be met. So, in this way, it is, in fact, over. Uh, can these things recover? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I'm like 13 years old. I don't have solutions or prescriptions. But, you know, I'm chilling. It'll be work out. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, keep on mewing. I'm sure that'll help, you fucking idiot.